Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm glad to be back. If you have not seen my last video on the science of melanin, I'm gonna link it here and you can click on it, watch it. But if you did watch it already, then you are already a melanin expert and you are ready to move forward and understand about the evolution of human skin color over the past thousands of years. If that's something that you're interested in learning about today, then make sure you keep watching, take notes, buckle up, cause you're about to learn some science. If you recall in the last video, I talked about the role of melanin and what it does for skin color. There's different types of melanin, yes. Melanin can play a role in protecting our bodies from the sun. That is gonna be an important thing to remember for this video, so keep that in mind or visit the last video for a refresher if you didn't remember. Let's talk about this as a story, right? Because science really, science really is a story. I'm gonna preface this story with a story about Charles Darwin, but I don't want you guys to assume that the science of skin color started with Charles Darwin. This was something that was always occurring in history. It's a natural phenomenon. There just so happened to have been somebody with enough privilege to be able to travel around the world and make observations and write them down. He made a lot of contributions to our understandings of evolution today. He traveled around the world in a ship called the HMS Beagle and he produced a few works that are very well known, one of which is called The Origin of Species. Charles Darwin when in his travels and in his observations of humans and other organisms on the planet documented that human skin color was darker at the equator of the earth and lighter as you went towards the poles of the earth. And he kind of left that at that. He didn't say too much, but what he did say was that he didn't think that it was related to climate. But we know so much more now about humans, about our planet Earth, than we did in the 1800s, thanks to technology. NASA has put out a multitude of satellites that orbit the Earth and take measurements of different things. NASA has put something out called Tom's Satellites, and those are total ozone mapping spectrometer satellites. And they have the capability to measure ozone values of the planet. And they also have the capability to put out information about the planet's UV radiation. So we have years and years of data that shows us what parts of the earth are receiving what amounts of UV radiation. If you are a true science maven, okay, then you are reflecting back on the last video that I made about melanin and UV radiation. Pause the video. If you were remember what I taught you in the last video, write it down in the comment section, pause it and write it. I wanna know if you remember what I taught you. From these TOMS satellites, we were able to create a graphic of UV radiation dispersal across the planet. And we also see a pattern. I'm gonna put these graphics next to each other so you can look for yourself and see the patterns of human skin color in the world versus the patterns of what areas of the planet receive the highest amounts of UV radiation. The really hot pink and red areas of this map are those parts of the world that receive the highest amounts of UV during the year. Cooler colors, those blue, greens, yellows, and grays are areas that have much lower amounts of UV radiation. When you look at the human skin color map, you also see that very interesting gradient where you have very darkly pigmented skins concentrated around the equator, and then you have lighter skin pigments radiating out from the equator towards the poles. And this is not by coincidence. Remember what I taught you in the last video about melanin and how melanin protects from UV radiation. It's very important to remember here that humans evolved in equatorial Africa, which means that the earliest humans lived there. So that environment, the climate there, the radiation that was happening in equatorial Africa impacted how humans evolved. The earliest humans had dark skin. They had lots of melanin because they lived at the equator. If you watched my previous video, you would know that that is a good thing. It's a great thing if you live at the equator to have lots of melanin because melanin protects you from UV radiation. Without UV radiation protection, you can have damage to your DNA and ultimately perhaps get something like skin cancer or very 
lots of cancer. Melanin helps to absorb that sunlight and protect your skin, your cells, your body from UV radiation. But one thing that I did not tell you in that last video was that UV radiation actually helps you to produce vitamins in your body. Yes, the sunlight actually plays a role in vitamin production in human beings. And that vitamin that's produced with the help of the sunlight is called vitamin D. And we need vitamin D, okay? We need vitamin D. Vitamin D helps us to produce strong bones. It helps us with our immune system. And it also plays a role in a lot of other functions in our bodies. So vitamin D production is very important and it is made with the help of sunlight. Let's talk about evolution on a grand scale, thousands of years. Humans did not stay in equatorial Africa. We moved, okay? We migrated all around the world. As that happened over thousands of years, our bodies began to make adaptations. As we moved away from the equator, the levels of melanin that our bodies had were no longer suiting what our body's needs were. Remember, we need vitamin D, okay? We need vitamin D, but we also don't wanna have damage to our DNA from UV radiation. Our bodies have to consistently figure out how much melanin, you know, we need to be successful as a species. Well, as humans moved away from the equator, we got lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. Why? Because as you move away from the equator, UV radiation decreases and decreases and decreases and decreases. So over time, our skin color lightened because we needed to find the balance between existing in the right amount of UV radiation and also having a dark enough skin color to block out excess UV radiation, right? We needed to make vitamin D, but we also didn't want to have too much melanin to block out the sun rays, which help us make vitamin D, right? So if there's less UV radiation, we don't need as much melanin. Vitamin D deficiency can kind of creep up on you and cause a lot of problems, like problems with your immune system, problems with your mental health, and probably some problems with your bones as well. So it's very important that we maintain a proper amount of vitamin D in our systems. Now let's talk about why we see people of different skin colors all over the world today. We moved around quite a bit, okay? All of the things that I've talked about as far as humans migrating from equatorial Africa out into the rest of the parts of the world, that happened for thousands of years. I mean, tens of thousands of years it took humans to move out from equatorial Africa into different parts of the world. So all of the variations of skin color that you see today are a result of tens of thousands of years of evolution, right? But I'm a black woman and I live in New York. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I live in New York. I'm very far from equatorial Africa. That has a lot of societal implications, okay? A lot of cultural implications that we, we can't get into in this video because it's too deep. <laughs> And I'll be talking forever, but we all know why people like me are in New York right now, okay? We moved way faster in the past 400 years than we've ever moved in the history of humanity. And that is why we see such a mixture of people all around the world. We've had our ups, we've had our downs, but I think one thing that we must appreciate are our similarities, and our differences because they're all so beautiful. They are all so telling of our grand history that we have as a species. I mean, the fact that dark people like me, I mean, even, even darker people, there's people that are as dark as my hair that exists on this planet and people as light as this sheet of paper that exists on this planet. It's so beautiful. And I think we need to really sit down and appreciate that. The processes that we've gone through over time to even display all of these differences in who we are. So if you see someone who looks different than you, maybe has a different skin color, maybe a different set of features, learn how to appreciate that. Take that in and just remember that that is thousands and thousands of years of nature doing its thing, making us all unique and beautiful in our own special ways. I wanna take a special moment to thank my patrons on Patreon who are making monthly contributions to help me 
maintain this channel to continue making awesome science content. Thank you to Yori Che, Karen Springer, Frank Peters, Carmela Haynes, Sean McQueen, Sarah Peterson, Rita Keating, and a special thank you to Daisy's Gaming Lab for your contributions to my channel. Keep being your unapologetic selves, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.